are so excited today. This is a man I've been stalking for multiple years now. Uh, hi, I'm Barb Schmitz. We're here at 3D Experience World. We're so excited. We have the man, the myth, the legend, Drew Crow with us today. Thank you so, so much for having me. Thank you for letting me come and, and bring my presence to this amazing <laughs> conference. Um, something I've been wanting to do for years. And last year we had a little bit of a uh, situation, but I'm glad to be here this year. Super excited for this. Yeah, show. we're blaming COVID last year for uh, <laughs> unfortunately Drew, Drew not making the event last year, but we're so excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Because we're really getting serious about manufacturing. You have been there for a long time. Yes. I want you to tell our audience, how did you get your start? How did you get into manufacturing? Tell us a little bit about you, Drew, and then yeah. we'll get into what you're doing. Well, thank you. So I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, um, and it's weird because the city that I'm from, if you haven't been there, if you're not familiar with it, um, we are supposed to be the Midwest new uh, tech hub. And at the same time, we have one of the highest violent crime and you know murder rates in the United States and almost the world. So I came from the side that uh, <laughs> was one of the part of those statistics and i didn't really have a father or a school that was engaging me right so i didn't um have a good pathway my mom worked a lot to keep the lights on and you know sure. the bills paid and so she wasn't there a lot and it was just me and my brothers and sisters and then there was the streets outside of our doors right and watching my mom struggle watching my mom work all of these jobs and we still couldn't pay bills i wanted to do anything that i could do to help out and like I said, I wasn't being engaged in school, so I didn't have any particular skill sets that I could say, oh, I would be good for a job in this, or I should try this career path. So, you know, the streets are always hiring, and I found myself uh, doing some of the wrong things, which immediately got me into a cycle of going in and out of jail. Um, being a teenage father, as I was growing, I saw my son start to look up to the things that I was doing, and I kind of saw him emulating you know, the street life that I was that I was a part of. And I immediately saw that, you know, if I didn't do something different with my life, then he would be right here in the same cycle as I cycle. would. Yes, 100 percent. Right. Yeah. So I didn't know what that would be. I didn't know how to start, um, you know, walking in that that path of of the new life of mine. And I didn't know what skills or career set that would go to. So I just put the word out there that I'm looking for a job. Any job that is going to pay me a legal paycheck where I don't have to look over my shoulders and worry about getting locked up. And that just so happened that the job that was open to me was sweeping up a shop. And I got into that shop for the first time and I saw these machines making parts and like taking raw metal and cutting away from it and turning it into something that was more valuable. And I saw myself in that metal. I saw myself as a raw piece of metal, but there was something valuable inside of me. And when I was in the shop, I was looking at the different positions that um, were available. So I saw CNC machinists and I saw CNC programmers and I saw engineers and I was like, you know, how do I do it? How do I get there? Unfortunately, there weren't a lot of people that looked like me in the shop. So it was tough for me to build a network and it was tough for me to find a mentor to kind of guide me right. and help me find these things. So I kind of had to do it myself. I, I found a old machinist manual. There was um, a Titans of CNC, but YouTube wasn't big enough yet. Yeah. So yeah. there was no you know, digital teacher that I could find. Right. And I just kind of taught myself. And as I would move up position, position in the shop, I went from the saw to uh, manual machinist, to CNC machinist, to CNC programmer, um, to eventually getting into an engineering room and getting to use all of these different things. And I would go home <clears throat> at night to the neighborhood I was from, and people that knew me for the things that I was doing in the streets now saw me walking a little bit different. I had my chin up. My kids were going to better schools. We had better cars. And they're asking me, like, Drew, what do you do? So that, in turn, became me teaching um, community members these skills. So teaching them how to program machines, teaching them CAD CAM, teaching them how to draw in digital spaces, which then allowed me to start hiring these same people from the community at the plants that I was working at. Okay. And so um, that's how I got into this industry. Uh, and it has given me something um, that I work every day to repay it. I feel like this is 
Um, a lot of people say it's your second chance when you come from those types of situations. But this has been my first chance, and I want a lot of other people to experience this as well, or at least know that it's an option before they make some of the bad decisions Absolutely. that I made. Yeah, well, you're paying it forward, right? Yes. That is so amazing. And I know when you, initially you had an organization called the American Manufacturing Renaissance. Yes. And I understand you've rebranded and you've we changed have. a little bit. Can you tell me a little bit more about I what you Yeah, so thank you. So, um, you know, just, just being the person that I was um, and giving to the industry in the way that I was giving, it's no secret that we have a huge skills gap, right? Yeah. And, you know, most manufacturing, engineering, and design firms have a lot of jobs open right now, and they can't find the people to fill these positions. And, you know, my solution is that we've got communities that haven't known that these positions even existed. So if we build a bridge from the community to the industry, then we can begin to fill those positions mm -hmm. and make a more robust pipeline, right? Right. And so there was nobody really um, in this space that was building that bridge and making that connection. And at the same time, my name was, you know, starting to ring more bells and people were hearing from me, you know, I started working at John Deere and then I would go to Caterpillar and do the same thing and, you know, help them with, with hiring more people from the community, which in turn stopped their, their turnover rate and more people kept their jobs, decided to get skilled up and they were more productive. So, you know, John Deere called Caterpillar, who called Anheuser-Busch and my profile just started getting bigger and bigger. And I started doing these things for these different companies. At the same time, I was speaking at, you know, boys and girls clubs and youth offender groups and battered women's shelters and uh, teaching them about these careers and sure. local places to go get them. And, you know, I would get a call because the same things that are affecting St. Louis right now are affecting Chicago, Chicago. and affecting Detroit and yeah. um, cities like that. So there were pretty much 12 major cities uh, that have an urban core with high youth unemployment, um, high crime rates and a lot of open manufacturing jobs and I decided to launch a tour and to get into each one of these cities, get in front of these job seekers, get in front of this youth, show them these careers and their options to connect with them and then help in, um, the industry go back and build bridges to connect with them and hire them in their positions. The first year that we went out, actually the first two years, it was the New American Manufacturing Renaissance Tour and that's just really a tough thing to say. It doesn't, it <laughs> it's doesn't not roll social up. media yes, friendly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, so that was one reason. And then another thing was um, I was able to keynote the highest technical educators conference this year with all of the national um, H Tech educators. So these are um, high school and post secondary um, instructors and professors that are all in one place, and they all teach either engineering, CAD CAM design, or manufacturing. And at that conference, I remember my first year as an instructor. And I remember that, you know, we are an industry that doesn't get a lot of love. So a lot of people don't know what we have going on, but we are one of the most important industries in everything that goes around. We're, we're the top industry in a global market. Right. If it doesn't, you know, come through us, it doesn't get made. Ideas don't go from here to here without digital design and being produced by somebody. So being as, as big as that was, I figured, you know, we need somebody to champion this next group of champions of America, champions of industry, champions of, of innovation. And so that's what I'm here to do. I'm here on this tour this year. We are still the renaissance, but we are the champions of champions where we're going to go and build equitable solutions. We're going to give them the software that they need from, you know, our partners to do design better, to, you know, um, you know make better parts, to teach a deeper curriculum so that we're sending better engineers and better designers and better manufacturers into the industry and they're all coming from this community. So we are the champions of champions uh, this year and you it. actually heard it here first um, on Tyler Works Live. Oh wow, all right, <laughs> how exciting is that? <laughs> oh, that's super cool, Drew, super cool. So you are a bridge builder is what you are. Absolutely, and the beautiful part about it is, um, you know, this movement started off where I thought that I was only going to be connecting with kids that, you know, look like me, to be honest. I thought, you know, just the, the black and brown babies in the schools that I go to are really going to see that connection. But when I was on tour, I saw that it was not just hoodies and, and Jordans. 
it was, you know, Wranglers and cowboy boots sitting yeah. next to them. And, you know, we had a, a little bit of all of America in there. And what I realized is everybody right now just needs a hope and they need a clear pathway yeah. to some type of stability. Mm -hmm. And our industry is one of the few that really offers that. Yeah. And we have such a low barrier of entry, but, you know, such a high Potential even if we for have, growth. do we even have ceilings? Because yeah. there's so much. There are that no you glass can do. ceilings right, here. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So you know, getting in front of these communities um, is important, not just for me, but but for all of us as an industry. That is awesome. What a great message. Honestly, you're inspiring, Drew. Thank you. I'm so glad that you made it this year. Thank you very We're much. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. And what inspires me, I want to shout out everybody um, like yourself and like SolidWorks who have helped me build this platform and who have come behind me, stand alongside of me and help me, you know, make this thing stronger because without me, there is no, I mean, without y'all, there is no me, right? Mm -hmm. So without more people making this thing happen, when I leave their city, continue the conversations, continue to reach into the community, continue to give back to the educational and workspace, workforce mm -hmm. training spaces, there is no me. So thank you and thank anybody else that might be watching this that has been a part into contributing to this movement. Um, I'm nothing without y'all, so I appreciate every opportunity. Awesome. Much love thank to you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Drew, appreciate it.